the Christmas Eves of my youth were just some of the best times. It was the best food, lots of laughs, lots of fun, and it was, as I look back now, more of a ritual because we did the same thing year after year from the way we greeted each other to the food we ate to the stories we told, and I wanted to preserve that story for younger generations. And then another reason was uh, when I knew this story would go public somehow, I wanted to jam as many family members into the gig as possible. So uh, that's one reason I chose to talk about Christmas Eve. One Christmas Eve during the early 1960s when I was a little girl, I remember that my grandmother gave me a broom for Christmas. It was green and looked just like a regular broom, made a little smaller for a child to play with. It was wrapped in Christmas paper, but the wrapping followed the exact outline of the broom, and the green bristles were sticking out the bottom of the package. There was no doubt this was a broom. So I said, thanks for the broom, Graham. I guess she was disappointed that I wouldn't be surprised when I opened my present. So she looked me in the eye and said in all sincerity, it's not a broom, as if she was prompting me to guess what it really might be. I still knew it was a broom, but Grandma insisted, it's not a broom. Well, when I unwrapped it, sure enough, it was a broom. It turned out to be a great Christmas present because when I think of that broom, I'm instantly connected to those great Christmas Eve celebrations at Grandma and Grandpa's house over the years. They lived in a white stucco house on Osage Street in Northwest Denver. Every time we entered the house, Grandpa would greet us as he stood relaxed behind one of the two colonnades that separated the living room from the dining room. The scent of garlic and oregano drew us back into the kitchen where my grandma was cooking the macaroni, we didn't call it pasta in those days, and all kinds of fish. We'd sit down to begin the meal and pass our plates to my mom who would serve up the macaroni on each plate, dipping the serving spoon in the bowl to get the extra juice made by the olive oil and garlic that settled on the bottom. The fish would be served as a second course. The bacala and the fried smelts were my favorites. We washed it all down with 7-Up or homemade wine, served in juice glasses filled to the rim. Throughout the meal, the conversation was loud and lively, but I didn't say much. I had too much fun eating and laughing and listening to all the old stories. My dad would talk about how he and his buddies would cruise 16th Street in his 1940 Ford. Then Uncle Roxy would tell us about the time he was driving home from a party, but he got lost driving around and around City Park till dawn. The stories went on and on. We took our time enjoying the meal and never asked to be excused from the table. It was too entertaining. By the time the dessert tray was brought to the table, more visitors would begin to pile in and my Uncle Roxy would play his accordion while my grandpa and Uncle Tony sang along. This would go on until it was time to go to Midnight Mass at Mount Carmel. All of those songs, stories, and food became part of who I was. And that's why more than 45 years later, I still have that little green broom. Although I know now, Grandma was actually right. It's not a broom.